I'm Levi Longfellow, Beverly Hills Clairvoyant to the Stars, or otherwise known as Beverly Hills Clairvoyant to the Stars, talking to you from San Diego today. We've been doing a number of video um, sessions with um, my guide Antar, who now spells his name A-N-T-T-A-R-R, -T -T I believe. Is that correct? I believe that's correct. Um, People are always asking me what it feels like to go into trance and what some of my experiences are. And so each time I do one of these, I try to recount uh, the experiences that come to mind and uh, that are most frequently asked about. And a lot of uh, people have noticed over the years that when I move into a trance state, I tend to become left-handed most of the time, at least for a considerable period of time during um, trance conditions. And uh, it's very interesting in that when I wake up, I frequently am st I'm still left-handed, but I feel it wearing off. It's a very funny feeling. And then my right hand will switch in, and then I'm back to me completely. So some kind of what Anto refers to as neuro-wiring or something's involved in this that um, I think it's very interesting. It's been <coughs> increasing in intensity over a number of years, and then not very long ago, um, one of my, my friends was asking um, some questions for a client and we were just talking in, a, in the kitchen. I wasn't doing an official reading, but the next thing I know, uh, I just started getting impressions from Antar and I get this little electrical tingly sensations in the right uh, hand side of the back of my acceptable lobe. And uh, before I knew it, um, I woke up and Andrew had been talking, answering these questions and walking my body around while he was doing it. I always experience a peculiar spaced out and phased out feeling when I'm coming back from that type of trance, but probably any type of trance. I'm a little bit disoriented. I, I'm not altogether sure what other psychics and what other um, trance mediums may experience with this particular type of phenomena. I can only share with you my personal experiences. Um, my clientele and my schedule makes little room for me to find out what other psychics are up to uh, and what their private experiences may be regarding their developments and uh, associations with their guides and this sorts of things. I was very much surprised when I came to America and for uh, the media mystic trance the word channeling was used to cover everything from inspiration to songwriting to channeling an entity and um, I, f I felt it was a very peculiar concept because I was raised and taught in the tradition of the medium that was a link between this world and the next world that the average person is, just isn't tuned into and all of these beings are around us all the time but we're so focused on getting our automobiles repaired and uh, making sure that our cosmetologist is giving us a decent haircut and, and not ripping us off for our money or making a mistake. We're so preoccupied with the external world and things of this nature that we don't pay attention to these other energies that are very much present with us all the time. And I, I find it very peculiar when I'm going through a spurt of personal development, I'll begin to see images out of the corner of my eyes kind of behind me. And when I turn to look at them, they're gone. But a few times lately I've turned to look and it's been somewhere there and I saw them very clearly physically. And, and when I closed my eyes and opened them again, they were still there. And this is to some extent an unusual new dimension that's been occurring sporadically at different times. Uh, for me. I'm not prone to hallucinations or to hysteria or to mental imbalance of any kind and uh, most people that know me would um, under normal circumstances feel that I'm a, I'm a very emotionally stable person also overall although sometimes a bit high strung because of my stress levels and all the different murder cases and missing persons cases I'm constantly deluged with by phone even on my days off Days off are a thing of the past for me. <laughs> it would be nice if I accumulate sufficient finances to escape to where nobody knows me, but quickly I'm becoming more and more a media personality, so no matter where I, no matter where I go, there's always somebody somewhere that recognizes me and screams out my name, and then it's all over. I know what the poor celebrities feel like being attacked at the uh, airport for <laughs> autographs now. Um, so these are just some of the different experiences that I've had uh, with the, the development of these 
these paranormal abilities. And I'm so used and I feel so comfortable to being psychic. It's just a natural portion of my life now that um, I, I rarely ever think what the average person is experiencing, how their senses don't include these other inputs. And so that their mental processes don't include additional information when they're making their calculations about how to run their day or their week or, or something of this nature. It's becoming almost second almost second nature to me, maybe even first nature, who knows. Uh, it's a constant surprise that when somebody calls me and I tune into their perceptive mechanisms and the way that they're translating and making sense of their experience, and it doesn't include these extra inputs. And, and I realize that there's a world out there and a society out there that though becoming more and more open to the so-called New Age movement, and there's nothing new about it at all, it's older than current religion, any religion that's in existence today, uh, um, their experience is just uh, so different from what I experience on a daily basis that it's shocking to me in many instances. But I find that people are extremely receptive to me even though they get, they, once they get over the initial shock value that I'm a different type of person than what they are used to and I hang around with a different crowd than they may, I find that they're very accepting of me and my abilities, even ministers and priests that are very dogmatic up on the pulpit. Once they get to know me, it's very difficult for them to preach hellfire and brimstone to me. And I find that very interesting. So it just goes to show that having a winning personality and a winning attitude can go a long ways toward making it in, in today's society and in today's world. So these are just a few of my, my minor uh, observations and experiences. And um, with that, I would like to begin changing my, my focus and getting in touch with the energy that's been hanging around just behind me, kind of sort of shocking my back while I've been talking. And that is our friend Antar. By the way, that's a self-selected name uh, from this entity. At one point, he uh, had told me that we could consider using the name Uma, U-M-A, as a name, but uh, myself and my colleagues decided that might be even more outrageous than Antar which uh, some individuals equate with sound like a space alien name of some kind, but apparently this entity, uh, though being a space alien, literally, uh, it wasn't the least bit concerned about that, but was really more concerned with standing out and, and uh, having the kind of name that's memorable, something very different. So I'm going to begin counting down and relaxing and letting this energy being begin to work my what he calls my neuro circuits and see where this goes from there. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 1, Zero. Uh, uh. Salutations. Welcome to another installment of our educational video series. Due to psychosomatic weather conditions and electromagnetic weather conditions as well, our start today was slightly delayed. And give us a moment. You will notice the change in body movements and in disposition. Those of you that need visual and body language cues can learn from these in developing your own abilities 
It is frequently said by those who are popular and in the know that imitation is the best flattery. Well, imitation is also one of the best ways that you, human beings, learn. And give us a moment. By patterning, that is mimicking body movements and psychological flavors. You can begin to get a feeling on the inside of yourself about what it feels like to be in a somnambulistic condition. As you come to trust the condition, you can allow yourself to slide into deeper levels of consciousness as well and eventually be willing to let go ego control so that a non-distorted phenomena is occurring through you. Your ability to sense if others are being honest and sincere and your ability to register in your knowledge centers. Whether those who are practicing such disciplines as this are genuine will begin to clarify itself in your consciousness and you will know who to continue to consult if you must consult others. Being is that there is always this need in the human mind to be able to distinguish between fact and fancy, between reality and artificial realities. However, I must make a statement in clarification that all of your realities, though natural, are also artificial realities. Your social world is an artificial reality. So in this sense, the point could appear moot. But it is not. And give us a moment. The average human being, our kinesthetic friends are beginning to respond. The average human being spends the duration of their physical experience from birth until death perhaps believing that they are at one moment with their personal experience. And from the center of their being, believing that what they are feeling is truly them and is real and valid and that when they speak and communicate to others of their species, their fellows, their wives, their friends, their lovers, their enemies, they are coming from personal truth. In the cosmic dimensions that exist within the personal micro-orbit dimensions of your beingness, there is a balance point somewhere in the energy continuum where your personal truth realities must meet a more objective reality, a formulation, a conjugation, a fine line of energy difficult for the average mortal to walk upon, a tightrope of you, where personal reality and objective reality meet universal reality and universal aesthetics merge with private, personal and interpersonal social and private experience. And hence a balance point between perception and between cognitive processing of those perceptions, that is the interpretation and meanings then attributed to those perceptions to the functions of your memory systems, your programs your psychograms. When one comes to a point in their consciousness, at this level of development, there is a poised condition wherein one can evaluate and judge one's behavior and the behavior of others in a non-prejudicial fashion, but in another fashion. It is an evaluation based upon a merger between this objective realm and the private realm of your inner emotions and feelings and sensations by which you sense and interpret your private experience. But the average incarnate, the non-initiate, and many who believe they are initiates, but are delusional. The difference between delusion and self-creation may be elaborated upon later. 
the average mortal exists in a world, an inner space of feelings and emotions generated by ideas and the values. I'm truly believing many of them, in particular those of more left brain persuasion, that the world of solid fact is easily discernible from the world of fiction. But I'm here to tell you that in my observation of the human experience, the world of fiction is how you interpret and make sense of the world of facts and the meanings that you attribute to them. So there is not an absolutely objective reality anywhere on the human spectrum. Again, the average incarnate and human mortal, a mortal is one who has not realized in truth their sense of immortality. And so fear controls them in their behavior in their life. Fear of loss, of love, fear of loss of financial affluence, fear of loss of prestige of some kind, fear of loss of recognition, fear of non-appreciation. Those who come from this level of consciousness believe not in the infinite, but in the finite. And so they base their behavior and their conclusions and their cognitions of reality upon concepts of lack and limitation. Ants are his favorite buzzwords. And what you truly base your behavior upon, the sources from which it is derived will tend to continue to perpetuate itself in your private and mass experience. For your private experience intersects with mass social experience and you draw those to you that will support those things that you earnestly believe and in fact these individuals will tend to reinforce those things you already believe about yourself. But the average individual exists rather than in an entranced sonambulistic sleepwalking condition where communications of this nature can take place. They exist instead in a type of unconscientiousness where they are only vaguely aware of their physical environment and the true realities of those others in their personal life that people that environment. They are so busy responding to their own needs they are tremendously self-fixated and self-determined. Need gratification of their own immediate needs takes precedence over their relationships with others and completely colors their valuation of others. And there is what you would call a degree then of selfishness here that comes from this level of self-fixated focus. It drives off opportunities and it drives off friendships. And before you know it, only relatives will want to deal with you. And that is mostly out of social obligation, brainwashing and training, not because you are pleasant to be around. So what is the difference between the initiate, one who is being initiated through their cognitive processes and becoming increasingly self-aware of what their defects are what deformities and twisted patterns of emotions and thoughts and values generate behaviors designed to disguise their own feeling and own perception of infirmity that keeps these individuals from summoning their inner strength and seeing the picture clearly for what it is without ego filters acting as cushions and protecting them from the very reality which causes them so much pain. Rather than letting this reality go, they preserve this reality by dressing it up in clothes that are socially acceptable. And they justify their actions and their behavior and they omit information that would point very clearly to their own deficiencies. One of the greatest responsibilities of spiritual development is diagnosing, outlining and clearly perceiving one's deficiencies. For the Holy Spirit, if I must use a socially popular term, cannot act through you, through your micro-orbit of energies. 
if it must act through these distorted patterns of perception, these convoluted patterns of internalized deceptions and self-deceptions upon which the average human being builds their world, their little ego bubble of comfort, their little life space. These things have intrinsic value in this discussion because we are attempting to outline common self-sabotage behaviors that affect genuine accomplishment rather than faked accomplishment, faked realities, made-up relationships, made-up self-images that poof, blow away as soon as the spotlight is put upon the individual because they do not have a more solid content within them. Even though every effort is made by the ego to create this solid content, frequently it is done in a fashion as if it were done in a hurry, without an attention to detail. And so other individuals would tend to notice this hypothetical person, shortcomings, but never tell them for fear of retribution or disapproval from that person, depending upon that person's power relationship within the family unit, the social unit, and the business world. The business world, as you know it today, is run on ego and power relationships. A hierarchy exists between the boss and the peons, but of course the boss has his or her boss and is a peon to them usually. You have your assistants and your helpers and individuals with various specialized forms of education that have good typing skills and know how to mail out letters for the mailman to pick up from the office. You have a hierarchy of individuals in that fulfill various positions and organization for psychological and sociological is very important to making your world run as it exists today, as it has always existed as it will exist, as it goes through its various transformations. Oddly, these organizations and patterns of learned behavior are derived from man's basic psychological structure, which has genetic influences within it, trace memories and ancestral drives. You have emotions that your great-grandfather had you share a linkage with your ancestors that in your modern Western world is too infrequently appreciated. You carry within you the living memory of the at one time physically objectified being known as your grandparents and their grandparents on down for hundreds of generations until the species, if you go back far enough, if you could see what I perceive, did not resemble physically or psychologically what it does today. But the evolutionary steps and development that occurred approximately every 10,000 years and in other time cycles as well, through the stages of social, ecological and personal family unit evolution are clearly marked like rings in a tree. So that all of the catastrophes and the bad weather conditions and the droughts and the plagues are all recorded within your genetic memory and these things add weight to all of your personal feelings. There's a pool of ancient knowledge within you. There are memory patterns of who you have been. There are, for instance, tribes in various parts of your physical world wherein the Spirits of the family incarnate every seventh cycle or every seventh generation and they literally stick to this incarnational pattern. It is a tradition for these tribes. It is also, however, very common due to a psychological and magnetic linkage for human beings to continue to incarnate within the same family unit wherein each family member will play different roles. Who is your mother this time around? It may have been your daughter or your lover or some other significant person in your previous existence. Each family unit, however, has their own very eccentric traditions of how this works. 
as you become more aware and become more psychologically initiated, you begin to look at your friends, and if you blur your vision, their face and their physical body will begin to change, and very frequently it will be the most recent memory and the etheric double of who they were, frequently in relation to you. Your ability to disentangle the facts and not distort it through beliefs and philosophies, however, is vital to an accurate interpretation of this material. The greatest pitfall of those developing HSP, high-sensory perception, ESP, extrasensory perception, and HNSP, higher non-sensory perception, is that they filter these perceptions through learned constructs that they value currently. Mankind frequently structures his society in the same way. There are patterns, however, of denial inherited and passed down from parents so that a family may have strong deceptive patterns. Many gypsy families, for instance, have very strong deceptive patterns ingrained within the unconscious so that the newborn children, even if taken from these families by law enforcement, will have these patterns so strongly ingrained within them that they will automatically begin distorting information and manipulating others by reading them. And in this way, obtaining their monies and their valuables and things of this nature. So, the role of genetics is much more powerful than you may believe in both sociological sense and also in the sense of the development of various disease processes and even stronger in personality and psychological traits. How many times have you looked at a relative and say, he speaks just like his father who died in the war. He has never met his father but he acts just like his father did at that age. Or she acts just like her mother did at that age. Or in some cases, he acts just like his mother did at that age. Or she acts just like her father did at that age. It is obviously then no coincidence and a point to a verifiable reality that something is an operation here. Knowledge is never destroyed in a family soul. There are family souls as there are individual souls. There are interracial patterns connected with this. Certain species of human organisms frequently related to skin color and things of this nature will tend to think and behave in a more aggressive fashion than another species of human. One may attempt to wipe out all social knowledge that such differences exist, but this will not help those dealing with genuine social realities. They are building castles in the sky that will crumble when the first sign of trouble comes along. So, the alternative is to focus on the things humans have in common. Mutual group needs. Nations cooperate with each other in order to accomplish a common purpose or defeat an enemy. But the human kingdom needs to graduate beyond the need to have external enemies, such as nations. Our personal enemies and personal experience. And they need to handle their own inner enemies, their own inner demons. Many of them, these psychological patterns of conduct, perception, feeling, emotion, imagination, and behavior, derived from these ancestral memories through the genetic pool. So that you are not just dealing with surface realities whenever you act or do anything. You are deriving a knowledge from a deeper pool of emotion within you. A body of emotion and memory that is a buildup of thousands of years of previous lives of your genetic ancestors as well as reincarnational memories. So that these past experiences, because this makes sense to you, I use this term. When you die, past, present, and future will have a more versatile meaning to you. And the future event may take place in the past and be asserted in the past readily and easily without hesitance or resistance, as soon as one overcomes their own cognitive prejudice. 
the way that you have been designed to piece sensory information and psychological information together. Frequently, I have my psychic friends and clients look into a mirror and discuss a particular problem in their lives with or without a candle, with or without controlled lighting, and gaze until their vision becomes blurry while discussing these things, and their facial structure and their body image will begin to change. They will begin to see what appears to be heat rising from the street on a hot day between them and the mirror. And as they attempt to gaze through this and keep their eyes defocused without over-concentrating, their body will begin to change into not only who they have been before, and sometimes who they will be, but it would begin to represent psychological patterns within their own neurosensory makeup. All of your previous existences are ingrained into your body. All of these previous physical features and bodies, as well as psychological characteristics, are easily and readily discernible to a more advanced clairvoyance that has reached at least the third or fourth stage of initiation psychologically. That is correct. There are universal stages of initiation common to all mammalian creatures with the genetic human prototypical build ingrained within them. Among all of your differences, there are similarities between you. Returning to the previous comment some time ago in this discussion, we were talking about deception. I mentioned to my psychic, and he wrote this down before he left his home to come and do this video today. Discussions concerning cloaking mechanisms, psychological cloaking mechanisms, disguises, and deception, and hidden agendas. As one matures upon the path, they become more upfront with what their motivations are and capable of handling their fear of rejection or hearing the word no without falling apart. It takes a long period of time many attempts to pull the plug on a deeply ingrained pattern of behavior. In a sense, your physical lives fulfill your expectations, but you have sometimes conflicting expectations in various levels of your own consciousness. And because you have these conflicting thoughts, emotions, and concepts battling each other, you will see confusing results and you may say, then because of these results, I do not believe that reality follows my expectations. But such is not the case in such cases, you merely have confused expectations. There are destiny patterns within your hearts that cause you to crave and to seek out certain types of human beings and life experiences, certain value quotients that exist within you that you automatically seek to fulfill, consciously or unconsciously. The aspirant becomes more and more conscious of what their unconscious motivations are so that they can eliminate self-sabotage patterns caused from conflicting galaxies of emotion and thought within the very stratum or strata of their consciousness. When your whole being resonates as one, that is, when the shells of consciousness are perforated, and consciousness begins to flow throughout the physical and non-physical micro-orbit and the energetic body of the etheric vehicle and the astral vehicle. A transformation takes place. You are no longer who you were before. Your old way of relating to others no longer is of value to you. Your manner of making sense of your life experiences is now dysfunctional, where before it seemed the cream of the crop way of handling life and life circumstances. Certain astrological transits and conditions will influence some of these things, for certain of these celestial and non-celestial bodies resonate to specific frequencies of energies that do come from the floating orbs that you call planets surrounding your physical Earth.
Each physical planet beams to your planet and other planets as well throughout the galaxy frequencies of energy absorbed from other galaxies reflected into your galaxy and simultaneously as energy is barraged into your system it is simultaneously broadcast out of your system to keep a dynamic balance and equilibrium and operation that is intricate and beyond the human ability to conceive or begin to even imagine if these energies were not allowed out of your system if it were not a permeable system the system would grow so hot all things within it would melt and be converted into the gaseous condition and then from gas into even higher radiations and the physical universe as you know it would cease to exist though it would probably reform later according to a similar pattern for there is a universal pattern within all physical systems just as there are universal patterns within all psychological systems that are physical equivalents give us a moment These video discussions are designed to take the truthful seeker deeper than they have gone before. Those of you that have not had time to read everything available and to sift through all the information will find this immensely valuable and beneficial because it will save you many years of what otherwise could easily be translated and perceived to be wasted effort that is the value of these communications in one sense or another i touch upon psychic development in all of my communications my concern is for the development of the whole entity so hence if i am discussing your world of business and finances and how to get more out of your life in this sense i always refer to the intuition to your feeling and emotional bodies to the thought concepts within your mind and to the way that you process cognitive and emotional information and data again the way that you sense interpret your world and your private and social reality are involved in all transactions of life experience you seek particular you follow particular self-styled trends when you reincarnate you have habits of reincarnation when you die you tend to follow certain trends as well you tend to die in a particular fashion you tend to have a series of lives in your terms one right after the other you may fight to the last breath you may have several death episodes in life where you build up almost an immunity to the death process and live to an extremely old age in relatively good and ripened condition some of you choose to die in your sleep or to suffer accident or die in war you tend to have preferences then built up within your spiritual psychoanalytic makeup there are reasons why then you are the way you are whether you are receptive to higher spiritual guidance intuition and information from your own psyche or the psyche of others will be determined by certain influences favorable or unfavorable controlling your psychology few human beings have graduated to the level of development where they have conquered the multidimensional layers of the ego and exist in a free will condition such of you few of you can actually visualize a free will condition your concept of free will is still viewed through ego filters now i would suggest a short break and we will return to elaborate upon some very important points here and i will try not to come off too closely resembling the image of a university professor so you do not fall asleep in these communications Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine.
Che va es? A moment. Once we have established trans patterns in a particular day, it is much easier to resume communication since the necessary channels within the brain and the neurosynopsis have been organized. Give us a moment. If you close your physical eyes, you will automatically move into another state of perception. Physical light entering through the physical eyes affects your brainwave functions. And a light deficiency is one of the most common causes of neuroendocrine imbalance and depression, which is why so many experience depression in the winter months, because of the shorter time span during the day that full string sunlight is reaching your earth. Of course, sexual drive tends to fall also in the winter months. Some of this is due to reduced physical activity, but more in particular to the lack of intensity of sunlight, which uh, affects the uh, pituitary and penile organisms, hmm, organs within the physical brain and the chemicals that are being released into the bloodstream. So there is some truth to the hypothesis that sex drive is more intense in the spring and summer months. Now, give us a moment. Your body is genetically conditioned through hundreds of generations of ancestors to respond to sunlight and moonlight in a particular rhythm and fashion. It knows how to respond to these solar radiations to produce the necessary chemicals in the breeding years to induce desire. Most individuals experience an increased drive toward romance as the warmer months of the year begin to progressively move closer and closer and the length of the day and the weather temperature increases. Those living in tropical climates, however, would not experience this effect in quite the same way. Learning to coordinate your moods and your desires for physical exercise, changes in your appetite, your sexual cravings and desires, and even your status ego-oriented desires have much to do with the time of year. And the quality, the frequency of light and solar bands hitting your planet and being filtered through the atmosphere in the spring, summer, winter, and fall months of your yearly cycle. These are trace memories acting themselves out within your genome system, within your genetic programs. In the same sense, you have natural methods of behaving and sensing emotions and experiencing emotions, registering your inner emotional processes because these are generated through cycles of behavior, the results of genesis, genetically oriented and generated behavior. You have emotions and you frequently view your emotions through mental screens, social terminology, social concepts. You interpret your relationships to others frequently also through social concepts learned in this immediate lifetime. But, however, the stronger emotions, especially those involving ownership of a mate or of a physical residence, are very powerful instinctual emotions that can drive individuals over the edge if such things are threatened according to ego perceptions. So much of the ego's strength is drawn from instinctual drives and patterns of behavior that have to do with territorialism. 
and ownership. Dogs will fight to protect their property from the intrusion of dogs that are not a portion of their accepted family unit. Humans, human males, but also human females will fight to keep intruders off of their property for the same purposes. It's a very interesting phenomena and I suggest you keep out on the alert for such things in your friends, your loved one's behavior. When human beings open up sexually and bond sexually, the reason-oriented aspects of the mind can very easily be transgressed and surpassed so that the usual moderators of behavior can become suppressed under a tide of emotion and murders of passion are frequently committed in such conditions. Those of you who have ever been thwarted in a relationship or had your mate ripped out from under you from a competition or some other similar episode can verify what I am saying through checking your own memory systems and how intense your emotions were of invalidations and invasion and how you at various times during this climatic cathartic episode where the emotions were at their boiling point could have easily seen yourself blowing people away committing things that in your normal state of mind your social conditioning and your genetic programming and your ancestral memories and your reincarnational memories would usually inhibit you from doing it is said in biblical literature the portion of the Bible that has not been tabbered with too heavily, some of the harmless parcels that they thought were non-important and didn't need to be changed. That as a man does in his heart, so a man does. And there is some literal truth to this. If you can conceive an event or action in your mind with sufficient ferocity of intensity, then the likelihood that you will perform this act is much greater than if you view or see the same act in your mind without the heart attachment, the emotional bond, or the emotional ferocity behind the image. You program your futures every day in the same way. With strong emotion, you visualize yourself doing something. Your imagination fills in all of the details. Three months later, you do not remember the episode, but you suddenly remember when you're actually carrying out the activity that you thought about doing this activity some months before but you did not realize how serious you were about it then. Though seriousness is not altogether a prerequisite for finding yourself carrying out self-hypnotically induced commands. Your financial success and your spiritual success also has a lot to do with such hypnotic programs that you are putting into yourself 24 hours a day. You get into habits of force-feeding yourself suggestions all the time that modify the functions of your memory, that modify your motivation for success, that decrease your energy level, cause physical illness, or suppress the function of the immune system, or any other number of side effects that can be produced. Nobody responds more powerfully to your suggestions than you do because usually your own ego filters are not blocking your response to your suggestions. There are some exceptions to this, but we will not indulge in these, in this particular communication. There is a difference between rudeness in social communication and in establishing the boundaries of your relationships and assertiveness and honesty in communication. Many human individuals use the excuse that they are being honest to be ruthless. Not realizing the impact they are having upon their fellow creatures. The type of wounds that they may be inducing. So you want to be careful about unintentionally and un conscientiously inducing or reinforcing other people's weaknesses while justifying or clarifying your own behavior. This you must each do in your own way. 
if you have a tendency in this direction. Others of you will tend to be less than appropriately assertive and aggressive in stating and clarifying what your feelings and thoughts are for various reasons. You may have felt uh, suppressed or subdued all of your life and hence were never sufficiently aggressive. You allowed others to assume what was right for you when in fact all the while, while you were along for the ride, you were not really contributing from a heartfelt center of your being. Your emotions have their own natural validity. This is not to be questioned. What is to be questioned are the source of those emotions and those emotional reactions. Your modern psychologist and your modern psychiatrist have only begun to scratch the surface of the origin of human emotion. Beginning your neurologist and your pathologist and your medicinologist to outline the pathways of the brain responsible for mating behavior, the neurochemicals and psychochemicals associated with love and bonding, self-image and self-esteem, and the feelings one has about oneself. Your truthful feeling about your condition, the first impulse before you modify it to make it more acceptable, is usually the impulse that you must fix if you wish to experience a genuine self-improvement. If it is about your physical appearance, then you must handle your appearance as a root foundation of some of these feelings and emotions that may subdue your natural aggressiveness, your creativity, and hence modify your success. If it is about your ability in forming long-term relationships, then you must handle these issues. If it is about finances, you must handle these issues, but these are almost artificial lines of demarcation for all of these subjects are intimately connected to self-image and self-perception. These perceptions frequently are emotional and memory patterns that a good hypnotherapist or psychologist could help you dig inside of yourself and locate the origins of some of these self-concepts. They are usually fixed and rather stable. They are fixed and stable, yet they float and tend to change position so that at times they can be very difficult to pin down, even to the best psychologist. Your thoughts and your emotions affect the chemical balances in your body. How many times have you sat down and thought of a wrong done to you? Whatever you conceive that to be in your current state of evolution. And over a period of an hour or so, whip yourself up into a mad fighting frenzy. Where again the emotions reach the boiling point. Simply by thinking of an inconsistency or a wrong or a transgression done to you, you have increased your heart rate, your perspiration rate, your burning of calories, and you have caused hormones to be released into the bloodstream that generate a stress response. How many times when you were in an angry or sad or upset mood did you hear a song that made you remember a pleasant activity in the past and as you remember this activity you forgot about the mood and you found yourself carried into a different mood space altogether where your joints stopped aching and the pain in your back perhaps did not bother you so much anymore while you were preoccupied or the hurting tooth did not bother you so much anymore. In fact, your dentist may use white sound frequently to help drown out pain signals in the physical body where they attempt to extract a tooth for those who are sensitive to anesthetics. Sound has a very powerful effect. You frequently organize your thoughts and your experience of your day, memorizing things that are important to you by talking to yourself in your native language. So. Talking to yourself means you are using inner sound. You actually articulate on a subverbal level, physical vocally, rather than physical vocally, it is subvocally, and you actually move the tongue muscles while you are forming a word pattern and storing the information. Many of you have very little memory for things you have not stored in this fashion on a conscious level. So very meaningful life experiences that can contradict many negative beliefs and things that you believe are true about yourself that are negatively impacting your reality in unseen or obvious ways. Bypass the conscious memory system. You cannot consciously memorize them or remember them or retrieve them.
because you did not store the information through the inner verbal sound that you use daily spontaneously and automatically. How many times to retain the address of a home did you have to repeat the number over and over only to get uh, distracted as you were looking for this residence and find that you forgot the number? The distraction stopped the psychological encoding process of the piece of data that you were trying to maintain in your consciousness. You frequently spend your days memorizing things in not any particular order that are meaningful to you. When you are laying down and resting before you get up in the morning, you are thinking of things that you need to accomplish that day or over the next few days. Psychologically, your thought processes are so bound up with time concepts and psychological lines of demarcation and a sense of space space orientation, that it is difficult for you to believe that in an out-of-body condition you do not deal with these concepts, for these are physicalized concepts of spirit, incarnate and matter. Of course, in different dimensions, similar to the physical dimension, there is physical properties like space and time and distance and the space-time continuum. But in the purely psychological dimensions, there is no aspect of the physical universe to be found. The root principles of those universes are different. As you progress in your spiritual and psychological development, you may wake up out of the body, while the body is in slumber, and find yourself in a universe where the occupants are very different than anything you had imagined. The psychic Shimoke does this frequently. In fact, some of the experiences are so alien and so different from his home base level of consciousness that he has no memory of them. All of you, to some extent, whether or not you are initiated psychiatrically and have the correct doors of energetic connections open within your craniums and mind, indulge in such activities regularly, but your egos censor them. So a lot of times it is very helpful if you have a conversation with your ego and ask, do my emotional programs allow me to have something I deeply value at this time in my life? Do I have conflicting emotions and thoughts on this subject? Is it all right for me to fall in love with this person? are to experience romantic feelings toward this person. Am I stuck on particular types of relationships and individuals? Is it all right for me to drive this particular type of vehicle, to dress this particular way, to speak with this particular type of act? Your ego patterns determine to a large extent what you will feel comfortable with and your comfort zones, as I repeatedly have stated, Carve out your inner psychological space so that you are not willing to step over the line to another level of actuality. You are so comfort-centered that you seek the familiar in all things, even while you seek to escape from the familiar. Because to many of you, it is your only point of reference. A few of you are more daring than some of your friends and have taken trips utilizing various substances and boy, the trips you have had. Your ability to assimilate these experiences, however, may not be mature. I suggest alternative methods be utilized and that substances should never be utilized outside of a safe ritualistic context and never when you are in a bar for various reasons. So many use the excuse of being honest as a method of irritating and offending others to express in a hidden sense their own aggression toward the world. You have many currents of emotions that you are feeling throughout your day. Simultaneously, you may be feeling agitation, you may also be feeling a sense of pleasure thinking about something that brings you great reward while you are also feeling agitation. You can be feeling grief and happiness at the same time. The emotions interpenetrate each other and the chemical balance of your physical body will always reflect 
the balance or imbalance of the psychoscape of the emotions you are experiencing that day or that hour or that moment. When you first wake during your day, before you are tired, before the first signs of physical weight is sensed in the body, you feel weight differently in the morning very differently. The fluid balance of your physical body is completely different. By the end of the day, you are several inches shorter, some of you. Some of you only a quarter inch. Depending on your age and other related factors, your diet and your belief system that you have bonded with, the programs of your society. If you have bonded heavily with the programs of your culture and your family, you will tend to live a certain type of life with a certain level of success, hits and misses, and then die in a certain pre-programmed fashion. This is why I frequently discuss evaluating your programs with a knowledge that knowledge, if it changes you, is power. But knowledge that has no effect upon your personal reality is not empowering to you, unless you make it so. So in your mind and in your heart, I want you to open up and reach out and try to interact with some of the concepts that I am delivering through Shimo K at this period of time onto these videotapes. This particular tape is not about accessing your patterns in so much as spotting certain surface characteristics of those patterns and those of you that are interested in going deeper may certainly do so. Through viewing other videos reading various literature that has been accumulated with my work with Shimoke over the years, or contacting him or the producers of these personally, through information that will be either on the back of your video cover or in some other manner presented as seen appropriate by the producer. Give us a moment. Each communication builds upon a previous communication like blocks, child's toys. So that one block of understanding prepares you to integrate another level of understanding. It is not necessary to view the material in sequence unless you are oriented in that fashion. It is only necessary that you see more than one block of material. Each communication will have some of the previous communications within it because I am coming from a holistic viewpoint here. You need to be able to integrate the information eventually, eventually in a holistic sense. But this can be very difficult to do when you view life through ego patterns and you slice out your life experiences into narrow slits of understanding and cognition. But that is the way that most human beings view their life. This is how they attempt to distinguish and to disentangle various information syndromes within their memory banks by separating the information, by diffusing it. So a type of psychological centrifusion, perhaps, to separate the elements. This is not altogether a bad or inferior process, but it is not the end of the process. Other types of developments and finishing processes need to be indulged in to make this a truly efficient process. Last time I communicated in one of these communications and we're delivering a block of material. I made reference to the fact, once again, that your psychoscape, the thoughts dominating your inner landscape are affecting your hormonal condition and will determine how your body utilizes food and burns calories throughout the day. If you persistently visualize a body part being modified with sufficient intensity, this will eventually penetrate the deeper levels of consciousness and affect that body part. In some way, you need to physically act out the suggestion that you are giving your physical body. In this way, it allows you to integrate the mental aspects of your beingness with the physical aspects of your beingness, and then spirit and body become one and unified in a synchronism of productive activity. Give us a moment. The way that you structure and pattern information neurologically leads you 
to communicate in certain fashions that seem to serve you very productively. But these patterns also can become a habit that outlive their purpose in your existence and in your life. You have ideas within your mind that are standards of value again that you wish to materialize in your physical experience whether it be in relationships or uh, in employments or in self-expression in the field of the arts and entertainment in recreational activities and self-improvement as you grow and as you develop, it is also, however, very and equally important to be willing to discard old concepts that you have not allowed to be feasible in materializing for you. Perhaps it is inappropriate at the time, but becoming overly fixated in any particular direction will tend to throw things out of balance. You then must learn when it is appropriate to be highly aggressive in promoting your activities and when it is appropriate to coast and to float. Sitting down in a room, in a space, in a park perhaps, perhaps in your car or on a walk near the beach or down a country lane some place where you are safe and feel reasonably comfortable. You can practice an exercise that I call purging. That is where you think whatever you are thinking and you verbalize it. And as you verbalize it, you imagine the steam behind the statement being released through the pores of your skin, as indeed is what is occurring. There is steam evaporating out of the pores of your skin. Heat clouds envelop your physical body. You will find that your deepest, truest ideas about any subject in your life, if you pursue this process, are based upon certain root concepts and values that themselves are more mobile and less fixated than you may believe. However, one must have a genuine openness and a readiness to change and to accept that what they believe is an honest and truthful reality about themselves may also be a limit to their expression, their attainment, and their happiness. Eventually, you reach a point in your development where it all begins to come together for you and you see life from a vintage point and a perspective that you were never able to attain before. You will find that statements I have made to you through my psychic shimoke or that other wise entities have made to you or that your own intuition has made to you have a completely new impact on you because your ego lenses and filters are not dominating your perceptions at this time when you think or read or hear this material. A new level of your beingness is being accessed then at this time. Our producer friend, Mr. Van Zaire, woke up with a statement on his mind. A statement, the verbal pattern and the words composing it, very much unlike his usual thought pattern. Many aspirants and seekers seek information in the dream state and they wonder about spiritual communication and educators such as myself and their guides and friends just before falling to sleep. And while they are sleeping, their subconscious and their inner mind is processing data and information. And you come into contact with other realities in this state that your ego will not allow you to access in the waking state because it is a contrary program that these types of experiences should be allowed or are not socially acceptable or contain fear ingrained within them in your psychologies. Would you care to state the statement, Mr. Van Zaire? Yes, the protagonist is within the host entity. The protagonist is within the host entity. 
That is an extremely wise statement and I wonder where he got it. The protagonist in your lives frequently is indeed inside of you in the form of the lower ego and lower ego functions. Your ego, being the great deceptive game player that it is, knows all of your weak points. It knows exactly what buttons to push to control you when it is in operation. You never know what stimulus pattern or memory pattern our inner sentient experience will bring this ego function into operation. So frequently, the protagonist is within you. You may not know this. You may believe it is your wife or your husband or your boss or another nation, when in fact, you are drawing these things to you because it is the inner protagonist utilizing your own telepathic and psychic and clairvoyant abilities to attract others to you to validate assumptions about yourself that you are allowing to exist. A type of splintered inner schizophrenia can exist and frequently does in non-integrated personalities. You will find that you can begin to have experiences similar to the producers. And your very own experience, if you are persistent and capable of working through your own ego resistance as prejudices and its desires, that control you on a regular basis and keep you inhibited at the wrong times and aggressive at the wrong times so that you are constantly experiencing an off timing and missing the mark in your activities. Enjoying only partial success when pragmatically you could or should be enjoying much more dramatic success than you may be, whether it be in romance and in relationships or in the world of finance and other related endeavors and activities. What you can conceive, you can achieve. But there is more to it than this. Sometimes the conceptual mind and your imaginative capabilities are closed circuits so that you can only conceive of certain types of alternatives and examples. In such a case, you have a limited conceptual ability and your ability to success, uh, experience achievement in any particular realm of your physical life will also be handicapped due to this limited capability. So, in meditation and in prayer, you ask for the insertions and the development of new concept patterns and inner arrangements to take place. And you try to be as open and receptive to this impossible, not knowing where these will come from. Suddenly, a child may make a simple statement, and it will come to you. Suddenly, you may receive a letter or a phone call and someone will mention a concept that will cause your subconscious to free associate and the concept will come to you then. A friend in a mental institution, usually completely irrational according to usual traditional and popular standards, may make some very intelligent comments completely out of context and spirit is speaking to you. It may be a bum, it may be a movie producer, it does not matter. It is the quality of the statement and how it impacts your life. It may be your bastard ex-husband or your bitchered ex-wife. It does not matter. You see, it is not necessarily the source, but the quality. If you are receptive and willing for a spirit and cosmic mind and your guides to communicate with you, Spirit, cosmic mind, and your guides will use any opening that the ego will not think about blocking. But your ego does have the capacity to send forth non-physical energy and attract circumstances to you to block your progress if you have not dealt with yourself change issues honestly. You say to yourself, how do I honestly feel about this situation? Here are my thoughts on it, here are my emotions on it, here are my gut-level reactions. And you take a break, you go back to the same subject, and you do it again. And if you continue this eventually, you will find you are on a personal journey of archaeological digging. And you are digging through layer after layer of concept of, and ideas, and eventually there will be connective ideas that put all of these things together. The origin, the generating source, the core, have you, of this entire zone of feeling and emotion and belief and supposed truth. But it is a truth that rather than currently being experienced as a fixated truth, 
as a transitional truth that you have treated as a fixated truth, a truth that is immobile because it is supposedly backed up by the world of facts and figures. Let me tell you about your human facts and figures. They can be slanted in any direction according to the politics of the consciousness of the group or individual that is using them. The principles that I share with you in my communications are deductions from millions of human life experiences. They are root principles that get beyond these prejudiced political perceptions. And if you are listening, you can avail yourself a tremendous amount of benefit and good. So, I suggest that as frequently as possible, you review this information in many different states of mind, in many different circumstances, while thinking over your life, and you will find that some of these principles are becoming filtered into your ideas, into your processes, and you will begin to see that perhaps those angry feelings you were having toward a female or male associate of yours are the products of your own psychology and not necessarily always a product of what they appear to be doing to you. So, this video series is about principles, about perception, about human and non-human psychology, about the why that is the why things are the way they are and why they happen the way they happen in your life experience. Why you seek the unattainables and why you ignore the attainables right at your feet and hence never attain the unattainables because you must have some ridge between the attainables and the unattainables to get to the unattainables. Each of these communications is a sincere effort to allow you to penetrate your own psychological pathologies, to identify them and to see your patterns, the interrelationships in your own thoughts and idea constellations, the emotions that it generates in your gut that make you live a certain way that create the lifestyle and the preferences that you feel best with. Many of you will say, dressing this way is me and dressing this way is not me, when either is a learned pattern, therefore neither is really you, because the you you are using to address that reality is a learned pattern also. It is not the essential self. But since you are dealing and living with social reality, there are patterns of perception you can voluntarily and willingly use to adjunct your success. Therefore, you pay particular attention to the way that you dress and the color patterns that you wear in your clothing and the vocabulary that you use in your communications and you will indeed begin to find that offers do start to come to you that before you were flustered about creating because you were using or are using outmoded and outdated social skills and psychological skills to attain these things you do not need to know exactly what you are about or doing or what step to take the step is self-suggestive to your perceptions, but for some reason, one reason or another, you are not listening. Perhaps it seems too uncomfortable to you, too small to make a difference. You can't see the connection and you think in whole patterns and you have to understand the connection before you will act on it. Spirit does not necessarily always obey a particular code of behavior, though there are certain tendencies within the natural behavior of spirit in general. I tell my psychic friends on a daily basis, rather than waiting for results or evidence to come to you to support your new reality, live from that reality in the centered present. Make it the reality you come from in a centered fashion. Make it real to yourself now and think of yourself. Memorize a new concept of yourself, essentially, is what I am saying. 
And in doing this, you automatically change your endocrine system's function and the way that you are using your memory. And you may find a year later, if you continue with this process, for you do this unconsciously already. Now do it consciously. If you continue with this process one year later, you may very much dislike the very things that you once were fanatical toward defending. And your friends will notice these things about you. If you are open to hearing them and have not scared the living wits out of them. So many of the things that you prefer and you say are me and are not me, these are ego patterns of learned identity bonding. Learn. You are comfortable with it. Comfortable, however, does not always mean it is the proper fit for your spiritual development. If there are things that you need in your physical, emotional, psychological, spiritual, financial, and social existence, then you may need to be willing to try an alternative method. Once you start the process, follow through with the process. The next step in the process will automatically begin to define itself to you in many ways if you are open and listening. Spirit, if you are open, speaks to you in a gentle whisper. The clutter and the sound and the noise and the heaviness and the coarseness of your own natural thought processes, however, can drown out this gentle tonality of consciousness. However, if you resist your growth processes with too much suppression, anger and denial and pointing fingers and blame, then spirit will hit you with a sledgehammer. And you will have to deal with the situation from an altogether different power perspective. These communications are designed to assist you in reaching a new level of functional integrity where your previous levels of self-honesty are taken to new vistas and levels of excellence where you can operate from that level between personal reality, social reality, and cosmic reality, and you have achieved the correct relationship, where you indeed come from right action, and right relationships, and right emotion, and right thought, and right ideology, to suit any particular phase of your life. But these principles, these zenith principles, these root principles go beyond that. They are the natural structure and organization by which you can live your entire existence, no matter what phase of existence you are in when you receive them. No matter what your physical age or your state of physical health, these principles will assist you in aligning the personal self with the universal will so that the universe pushes you into the limelight and moves the little self out of the way and the ego out of the way. You begin to use the word I less frequently in your communications and the word we more frequently in your communications or other replacements for the word I. In your Western culture, the word you will hear more than any other word is me, I, and mine. As a spiritual entity, I am not impressed with the intelligence of such a culture. It has reached a new stage of evolution where there are other root words in your syntactic vocabulary that can be utilized around which to build your sentences to communicate information. It is not that you should be impersonal in all of your attitudes, but there is a new level of intimate relationship with reality that can no longer be contained within and personified by the I-me pattern or the I-want or I-need gratification pattern of lower egotistical identifications. So these principles, though long-winded, are not difficult for you to psychologically interact with and make your own, to digest and to disseminate within the categories of your own psychological makeup. What you pretend portents, what you make real in you, you create. You then send forth projections into the social world unconsciously that then attract those very things to you. 
you establish your price and your level of quality in your life and your value in your life and all others are in your life to support that. If there are those in your life that are not supporting that quality, it is because you have not sufficiently eliminated old and decaying value systems that are still ego operative. And that means some more personal work needs to be done. Some more cleansing and letting go of addictions to certain ideas of the way things are supposed to be. You have to have a goal to shoot for but it must be the correct organizations of logistics and goals for spirit to assist you in manifesting these things. There is indeed a non-personal force that is here in existence in your human world. Consider it a mass thought form through which a larger, more intelligent force must use to intersect between its non-physical world and your physical world bound by the physical senses and the laws of social grace and value projection, creation and interpretation. You can be lord and masters of your personal reality. The new level of honesty is attained that is based not so much on what the ego decides must be real for you and for others, what is you and is not you, but more on what will mutually benefit yourself and others, rather than what will harm yourself and others. What you focus on is precisely what you will get. So again, be cautious and beware of what you ask for. If there are shortcomings in the things that you are asking for and you get them, you may not be satisfied, but you will get them. And each circumstance will show you where you are at psychodynamically when you ask for that particular issue, situation, subject that is engranted in your life. This is a sufficient communication. It has peace. I am satisfied. Be aware and alert to the subtle changes in your mood, your receptivity, in your timing, in your behavior. And aware of how others are now acting toward you hours and days after you view this video. You will be pleasantly surprised, perhaps after some initial minor shocks, you will indeed be pleasantly surprised. For these are designed to penetrate the resistant layers of ego filter to get to the heart of you. I bid you a fond good day. Watch the psychic awaken. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Usual conscious focus. Ten. Oh. 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 Mm. oh, hi, um, are we on break? Um, I believe this is the end of this um, particular trance dialogue. I hope you found something very interesting in it. I feel um, today that Antar's energy was very serious somehow. Like, on some level, I'm sensing he was addressing some very important issues and pertinent issues. And he considered them profound. And there seemed to be a tremendous amount of weight behind them. And Anta was very concerned about them getting through clearly or fairly clearly. So it must be very important for that kind of weight to be behind it. So I'm going to watch this video. And I suggest probably that you should too, if you get the opportunity. I hope it's good. I seem to feel that Antar seems very happy. 
Thank you all for viewing and for watching, and I wish you all the success and the reward that I'm experiencing in my life. Good day.